uh, the special program in homage to Jean Gabriel, who is far too young to have an homage, but what you're doing is so exciting for our festival, for the audience, that um, we couldn't resist. So thank you so much for being here, and Annegret will say something more about the master class and everything. Um, we programmed um, films by him in the animation program in the, during the past years, great program films in the documentary part, so he was in between and part of everything. So he said, wonderful, that's exactly what we want to show, that what Dorf Leipzig is about, the festival of animation and documentary, and we will show something that fits both. Uh, next to him is uh, Kumiana, and she is a close friend to Jean-Gabriel Perillo, and she will do a kind of interview with him um, that gives you a, a red line through his work and makes it maybe easier to access his work as well. Hello, everyone, uh, once again. Um, so I'm uh, Kumiana, and I will try to help out in the moderation of what I would like to see as an open discussion and a dialogue between among uh, all of us. I think that uh, at least, if not every festival, at least every second festival in Europe has programmed one of Jean Gabriel Verio's films, and uh, he has been described uh, in many, many different ways, uh, but what kind of <laughs> dominates is his um, engagement, political engagement with uh, the currents we live in, with history, with, with memory. Um, and that is, that is the place where I would actually like to start, maybe. So, uh, Jean Gabriel, um, you are considered as one of the most provocative um, experimental political filmmakers currently in Europe, uh, and certainly. Uh, 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 one who really um, engages not only with the past but with currents. And I would like to, to start from there. What does it mean political filmmaking and what does it mean political film nowadays? Yeah. It's, uh, I, uh, I don't think um, it's useful to make political films. It's just useful for me because it's, uh, I'm not uh, like an activist in real life, but I want to make something and I'm from the field of cinema, so I make political film. But for me, it's really far, far away from any real action. Mm. It's really like uh, petit bourgeois things to make mm. political films. Mm. Um, <laughs> But in another hand, we need to share also experience that has not from the reality. Mm. That could be books, discussion, films. It's better than nothing at all. Mm. Uh, and after the second answer, I could uh, say it's perhaps I, I don't really feel I'm, I'm a real filmmaker. I think I, I will perhaps stop to make film when I will have like more clear ID or perhaps one day if I go in real uh, in, like activism to work with people, for example, with a jail, I make two films in jail, but I don't know, perhaps one day I will work in jail with the people directly and I won't need to make films about it. I think I will, to make film is just for me a way to first to question myself about politics, but perhaps if one day I will have clear ID, of if one day revolution or big change happen, I will not need to make this kind of film. In that sense, uh, yes, it would be great if we can all be part of the revolution. But on the other hand, uh, I think that as long as we make films which are screaming out of us and which, we ha which, which have to come out of us uh, and are not forced or pretentious in any way, we can talk about um, honest cinema and cinema with touch, that touches upon upon um, politics and 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 the important issues which are which our society is, is facing. When when I I start to make I, I start to be editor, and I, I, I earned money as editor, and I was working on interesting film. I was not really uh, desire to make films. Mm -hmm. 
it was a dream, something like one day perhaps I will make film, but it was not like. Uh, and I start to make film because as audience, mm. I was looking for political films. Um, I just would like to know how you define political film, just in order to uh, get to know your opinion on you know where where the, the social film ends and the political film starts. No, it just um, it, it's always definition. It's uh, always complicated. I don't know, but plus to make a difference in between social film in France, for example, now it's like we are in fiction film and documentary, 100% uh, reality kind films. And you go to suburbs and you film someone and you just follow him and to make it like his story. But there is no involvement in the filmmaking. There is no statement. So it's not what happening in France in the suburb is unfair. It's just trying to find someone that just try to deal with, mm. but there is no clear statement. Mm. And I think yeah. for me it's political when the filmmaker states something. It's just the difference. It's, they are not unpolitical, but they are not like straightly political. And it's, and it's rare when a filmmaker states that it's, it, you have to stop, it's unfair, we have to find another solution. Mm. The, the, it's, so for, for me, I, I shrink the definition. Mm. But it's it's just mine. It's not, mm. Uh, mm. and we need an, uh, just a detail. We need every kind of films. Uh, I also had a question, which is hard to answer, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but both of you said something like uh, the revolution, which is coming. No, no, no. I don't believe the revolution is coming, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and I also think, like yesterday, when I was watching some of the films, I had the feeling like. I was like, wow, the people were really radical, like the um, all the social movements of the 60s and 70s brought certain like freedom or like, I don't know, whatever one thinks about it and stuff, but uh, for certain people, like, I don't know, for the queer um, movement, for the black movement, for the women's movement and so on. And I, I really like this approach that it is, um, um, a bourgeois thing to make like films because we need to change something because we are going to disaster whatever the point of view even if we talk about only ecology we are going into the end of humanity and we can talk about uh, weapons we can talk about technology about politics about everything I think this is the, the perfect point since we touched upon what is political film and what is political filmmaking to maybe go to one of, of your films and uh, which is very current and very political. Um, and then we can continue from there further on. So we, will, we decided to show the barbarians. Politics only happen when we disagree, mm. and not where everyone just agree. And I was I decided to make some kind of adaptation mm. of that idea. So at the beginning there was this part. Or at the, the first picture are quite funny because it's the politician, but it's up here. There is more and more amateur picture, so that we are also. I am also part in the that. same system. Mm. So it become, start to become more complex mm. because it's not funny anymore. <laughs> and at the, the second part that broke this rhythm, it's the demonstration and violent demonstration. Mm. And for me, I, I, as it was uh, a way to talk about something that make me uncomfortable mm. because we appeal for change. Mm. But I know that myself, but almost all of them, we are already, if something changes, if there is a revolution, we will be part of it, but we are also belonging to the past. Oh, that, that was only time. Sorry. 
so willow weep not for me. It was a testimony of an Ibakusha, a survivor of Hiroshima, and I was really ashamed, really ashamed when I read this book because I didn't know. And I was already, I don't know, uh, at the end of my 20s or something like that, and I didn't know. I, I just knew that there was a bomb at the end of the war to stop the war and to avoid an invasion of the, of the Japan, but that people were killed, but I didn't know what happened really in Hiroshima. <laughs> Uh, just before and just after the liberation of the camp, there is the chef woman in France. Mm. And perhaps it was those archives, it was the first time I saw them, really disgust me. Mm. Because it's uh, the violence in it is really like teeny, disgusting little violence. Mm. Really like disgusting. And it was impossible to understand, impossible to understand this kind of revenge, because it, it's even a fake revenge. People are suffering because of the, of the Nazis occupation. Uh, and even some of them were not at all, uh, were working with them, our collaborators, some of the people who do that. And they just, start to be liberated, that they act as the men they were liberated from. Did you experience some problems with the rights, or how do you deal with that? Or are you using royalty-free and so? Uh, long question, simple and long. Um, there is uh, mainly two ways I deal with archives. Uh, and that it's, uh, those two films are really different and could be a so good example. Uh, for even if she had been a criminal, uh, I make the film without uh, asking for funds. I just wanted to make it alone in my apartment. Without, I, just, I was not sure it would be a film or whatever. I didn't want to, 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 to beg for money. So that could be free, that should be free, that, that should be accessible, that we can we, we need to be able to find them for nothing, but we have to pay to make film about history. And when it's about like, I don't know, a uh, historical film about Marilyn Monroe, uh, we don't care, but when you are making a film about some events that are our common worldwide memory, and we have to pay for that, it, it's always like, for me, Contradiction yeah. of terms. Yeah, it's, and then we can know that uh, memory is part of the capitalism. That is, it's, you have a value. Memory have a value. It's not something like we have to move on and so on. No, it, memory have a price. The devil. You rest upon the power of the archive images to um, articulate the argument or the position or the, 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 to tell the story. Uh, and the devil for the, uh, uh, it's very specific that it enters what we refer to as a dialogue or as language. So can we maybe reflect on that? Language, suppose that you have to subtitle or to, to uh, for the public, for the audience, there I, it perhaps one of the points I take care of the audience is to use only images, you can share the film with worldwide audience. That is not the case with the language. I just want to deal with black and black liberation. My scene is picking up my damn gun and I'm a mother. 